Have you ever stumbled upon a film that left you with a whirlwind of emotions? Well, get ready for a roller coaster ride with The Collector, a gripping 1965 movie that will have you on the edge of your seat. This psychological thriller follows the story of a lonely young man who becomes infatuated with a beautiful art student and decides to add her to his collection. But what starts as a twisted obsession soon spirals into a chilling game of cat and mouse. As you dive into this classic film, be prepared for a mix of funny, shocking, and sad facts that will keep you glued to the screen. From unexpected plot twists to intense character dynamics, The Collector delivers a cinematic experience like no other. Now, as you watch, we invite you to reflect. Can you share a personal story of how this movie has inspired or impacted your life? We'd love to hear your thoughts and memories in the comments below. Get ready for a journey you won't soon forget. The Collector is a scary movie based on a book from 1963 by John Fowles. It's about a weird guy who traps a young woman in his house. He's really into collecting butterflies, and he treats her like one of his prized possessions. The film shows how this guy, played by Terence Stamp, struggles with his feelings for the woman, played by Samantha Egger. Stamp does a good job of showing how messed up the guy's mind is, while Egger shows how terrified the woman is. Even though there are some parts of the story that don't make sense, the ending is believable and really scary. It makes you think about how messed up people can be. Overall, The Collector is a scary movie that makes you think about how people can be really creepy and scary. William Wyler, originally offered to direct The Sound of Music, chose instead to helm The Collector. He began his career on stage in 1935 at the Windmill Theatre, returning in 1946 at the Aldwych Post, his Royal Naval Volunteer Reserve Service. Kenneth Moore, in his autobiography, mentions a brief appearance in the film, expressing fondness for Wyler and foregoing any legal action against the production company. Despite the allure of the sound of music, Wyler's decision to direct the collector showcased his versatility and artistic vision. The film's narrative captivated audiences with its psychological depth and suspenseful plot, marking a significant contribution to Wyler's distinguished filmography. The Collector, released in 1965, inspired the song's prosthetics and purity by the band Slipknot. The roles of Miranda Gray were declined by Natalie Wood and Tuesday Weld. During filming in 1964, there was significant turmoil in the British film industry. Columbia's decision to film both The Collector and King Rat in Hollywood added to these concerns. Despite challenges, The Collector remains a notable film in cinematic history for its influence and impact. A memorial plaque was revealed at the Duchess Theatre in London's West End, honoring the actor for his outstanding performance in Terence Rattigan's The Deep Blue Sea. Director William Wyler hesitated to cut scenes from the film, regretting the loss of what he considered some of the best footage he had ever captured, including Kenneth Moore's significant role. In recognition of his impact on the entertainment industry, he was celebrated at a special variety club of Great Britain luncheon on October 7, 1975, at the Savoy Hotel. The event, attended by esteemed figures from Britain's entertainment industry, marked Moore's four decades in the profession. Notable guests included Douglas Bader, the Royal Air Force fighter ace portrayed by Moore in Reach for the Sky. In an August 1975 interview with Royals Brown, composer Bernard Harriman disclosed that he was initially intended to score the film, but William Wyler opted for Morris Jarr instead, allegedly stating, I don't want to use a hitch, man. Despite a stalled film career by 1962, the lead actor played a role in Some People Without Compensation, with proceeds benefiting charity. Terry Southern was brought in to revise the script due to concerns about censorship and the novel's bleak ending. Southern proposed a happier ending, but none of his writing was ultimately used, and the film retained a somewhat bleak conclusion. In 2020, she earned the eighth earliest Best Actress Oscar nomination for her role in The Collector, tying with Julie Christie and following Olivia de Havilland, Leslie Caron, Carol Baker, Joanne Woodward, Shirley MacLaine, a tie between Piper Laurie and Sophia Loren and Julie Andrews. Samantha Egger, despite feeling uncomfortable due to Terence Stamp's distant behavior during filming, later discovered that he was simply following director William Wyler's instructions to remain in character. Stamp admitted that although he was friendly with Egger, Wyler wanted him to maintain distance to enhance Egger's isolation on set. Stamp's childhood was partly spent in the Channel Islands, where his father managed Jersey Eastern Railways. He attended Victoria College, Jersey, where he participated in school plays, including one where he portrayed a red-haired girl. 
His first male role was in J.M. Barry's The Admirable Crichton. Stamp later played the lead in both the film adaptation and a stage musical of Paradise Lagoon. The Collector, released in 1965, faced legal action from singer Dorothy Squires for mistakenly identifying another woman as Roger Moore's wife during the British Film Academy Awards. The woman was actually Louisa Mattioli, who had lived with Moore after separating from Squires. Represented by Michael Havers, the jury swiftly dismissed the defamation claim. At 8 minutes and 19 seconds into the DVD release, there's a scene showing the back of Kenneth Moore's head. A calendar in the kitchen displays the month of May, although the film was made in 1965. The month shown aligns with 1966, likely indicating the film's probable release year. The 1965 movie The Collector features Samantha Eggers' only Oscar-nominated performance. Kenneth Moore, an English performer, had a role in the film, but it was deleted during editing. Moore is notable for having a theater named after him in Ilford, known as the Kenneth Moore Theater, which opened in 1974. Despite appearing in various events at the theater, including poetry readings and musical evenings, Moore's scheduled appearance in 1979 had to be canceled due to illness. The Kenneth Moore Theater hosts the annual Kenny Awards, which recognizes productions staged at the venue through voting by independent reviewers and theater audiences. The movie, originally planned to be shot in classic black and white, captured audiences with its gripping story and eerie atmosphere. Set in Ilford, East London, the Kenneth Moore Theatre, a tribute to the famous actor, provided a suitable stage for the unfolding drama. In a crucial scene, as Freddie stealthily follows Miranda through the dimly lit streets, she unknowingly passes by a cinema lit up by the grandeur of Ben-Hur, a masterpiece directed by William Wyler. Interestingly, it was Wyler who also directed The Collector, blending these cinematic elements with skill. The contrast between Freddy's unsettling pursuit and the epic spectacle of Ben-Hur serves as a meaningful reflection of the movie's themes. In this story, every detail from the setting to the cinematic references is carefully crafted to engage the viewer. The Collector goes beyond mere entertainment, exploring the minds of its characters and the complexities of human obsession. Each scene is filled with tension, leaving a lasting impression on those who watch it. In the history of movies, The Collector stands as a testament to the power of storytelling and the art of filmmaking. Created with care and passion, it continues to fascinate audiences, offering new insights with each viewing. Ultimately, whether one is drawn to its suspenseful plot or its deep exploration of human nature, The Collector remains a timeless masterpiece in cinema. The Collector, a film from 1965, holds a peculiar place in history due to its association with notorious serial killer Robert Berdella. Berdella cited the movie as a key inspiration for his crimes, adding a chilling layer to its legacy. Before its release, actor Kenneth Moore was originally set to play the character of Miller in The Guns of Navarone. However, J. Arthur Rank released Moore from his contract, altering the course of the film's casting. Samantha Egger, who played a role in The Collector, had a challenging experience during its production. Her reported exaggerations about the filming process included false stories about film censor John Trevelyan, alleging that he passed the film because he fell asleep during the screening. These claims were debunked as the film was reviewed by all members of the British Board of Film Censors, of which Trevelyan was the chairman. Contrary to another fabricated story, the film's alleged relocation from England to California due to director William Wyler catching a cold was untrue. The decision to return to Hollywood stemmed from studio concerns about the potential for runaway productions causing financial challenges in foreign locations. In essence, the collector not only left its mark on the film industry, but also found an unexpected connection to true crime through Robert Berdella's disturbing inspiration.